Hey guys, this is Harrison with Explore Scientific. Today, I'm gonna to help unbox, assemble, and give you some pointers for your new telescope. I have with me today the Explore Scientific 8-inch Classic Dobsonian 208 millimeter. Went ahead and unpackaged everything, pulled everything out of its shipper box, and pulled off the plastic on a few things just because this is such a large telescope. As you see here, in one of the boxes is gonna be your entire base kit. It's all disassembled, but this will be your rocker box once we're done with assembly. With it comes all of the hardware that you may need, plus a handle, two bags worth of it. In one of the foam pieces, you'll have all of your accessories. You have a red dot sight that still has the plastic on it. Make sure to pull this off to uh, allow the battery to start being used once you're ready. You have a phone adapter, great for when you're ready to start doing some astrophotography on your phone. One eyepiece, 25 millimeter plossal, and an extension. And then the large box is your actual Dobsonian tube. This is the entire unit, comes in black. Inside this cap are two mirrors. Make sure you're careful of keeping this cap on. You wanna make sure that no dust or any type of debris that could scratch up the mirror gets inside. For the time being, we're gonna leave it on. And these are all the pieces that you come with. At the bottom of your package, you should find a piece of paper that says register your product now with a QR code on it. If you go ahead and scan this QR code and go through the process, it'll activate your product's extended warranty. It'll also enroll you in a free membership that we have here at Explore Scientific called the Explore Alliance. This comes with some extra benefits, including product protection for any of your Explore Scientific branded products. Let's start with the assembly. Here, I've laid out the main base components, including the bottom base plate, front brace, left and right panel, and top base plate. We're gonna start by taking one of the side panels and attaching it to the front brace. Make sure the metal flange is facing towards the brace and not away. As what I'm pointing out here, the metal flange is facing the inside of what will become the base unit. This is very important for the integrity of the telescope. We'll attach the side panels by using the provided assembly wood screws and the four millimeter hex key. While holding the pieces into position, go ahead and set your first screw. This will make it a little easier while setting the others. Each side gets three screws, all tightened finger snug by the hex key. We can do the same process on the other side, making sure that metal flange is still facing inwards. Now that the side panels are attached to the front brace, we can see that the unit is sturdy. The metal flanges are facing inwards, and on the outside, all you should see are wooden holes. We'll invert the base assembly you've built so far and attach the top base plate using the same assembly wood screws and four millimeter hex key. A good rule of thumb I recommend is finger tightening all six screws to ensure the base plate is correctly aligned. We want to make sure we don't put too much strain on one particular side, so I like to tighten similar to changing a tire. Start in one corner and follow a star pattern, tightening the next screw. Next, we'll work on installing the triangle base plate. For hardware, we'll need the large hex head bolts, the plastic bushing, the T-nut, a washer, and the two provided crescent wrenches. Let's prepare our hex nut by placing the washer onto the screw. Set that to the side and place the T-nut into the center hole of the bottom base plate. Make sure it's inserted from the top with the white pucks facing upwards. We'll place a finger on the T-nut and invert the base to show the bottom. Fully thread the bolt through the T-nut on the other side. On our round base, insert the plastic bushing into the empty hole and press down with your finger. With the hex head bolt fully threaded, 
attach the bottom base plate to the top base plate. Along with your hardware, grab the second washer and lock nut and combine in one hand. On the inside, we're going to attach these two pieces onto the bolt. Washer going first and finger snug for now. Using the two crescent wrenches that were provided, lightly tighten down the lock nut, but not all the way. Our goal here is to have this base loose enough where it can freely spin, but not too loose that the base wobbles while using the telescope. This may take some tightening and loosening to find that happy medium. Go ahead and invert your base right side up and give it a test spin. It should feel fluid, not too stiff, but also not rock. Now we will work on the handle. You'll need two socket head cap screws, two black washers, two hex nuts, and the handle. Start with the handle and insert the screws into both holes of the handle. Fit the handle and screws into the front brace. We'll spin the unit around so that we can work from the inside. Grab a washer and place them onto each screw. We'll do the same for the two hex nuts and finger tighten them so that your washer and nut don't fall off. We're going to use the smaller wrench that was provided and hold still the hex nuts. On the other side, we're going to use the biggest hex key that was provided so that we can spin and tighten down the handle into place. The handle should now be sturdy and locked onto the front brace to give a comfortable position to spin your telescope. The last part for building the base is attaching the spring posts. To install, we're going to take the Phillips head screw and slide the plastic post over the screw. We want to make sure the thicker end of the post is facing towards the base and the thinner side is exposed facing outwards. Simply screw into the last hole on each side panel using the provided screwdriver. These posts will allow tension to be applied between the base and telescope. I'd like to again note that the silver flange should not be facing outwards. Otherwise, the tension from the spring will rip the flange from the wood. We finished installing all the hardware on the base unit. We can go ahead and put it to the side for now and work on the tube. We'll attach the last two spring posts on either side of the altitude bearings. For hardware, we'll need the spring, row set knob bolts, and plastic posts. We'll start by sliding the spring onto the bolts and following with the post. Again, we want to do the same process, making sure the thinner side is exposed facing outwards. These bolts are designed to be completely hand screwed until the post is flush. Next, we'll attach a pull loop to the end ring by making a knot through itself. Then grip the pull loop and pull down on the spring. We'll do the exact same process on the other side bearing. The tube and base are now ready to be combined. Prepare both pieces next to each other so that we can lift the tube into the base. The best method is to grip it by its side bearings and lift up and slowly set into the base. Make sure to watch out for your fingers, unlike shown here. We'll now set the tension on the springs. Firmly grip the pull loop with either one or two hands until you can place the spring's end over the bottom screw head and onto the narrow part of the post. Do the same process on both sides and once set, Make sure to push the spring in towards the unit to prevent slipping. Now we successfully have tension that allows the Dobsonian to be tilted and stay at its set angles. Now let's place the accessories. We'll start with the red dot sight by removing the plastic and activating its battery. On the dovetail, make sure the thumb screw is loosened and slide the bracket into position. Hold the sight steady and fasten the thumb screw, locking it into placement. Once we are ready to use the daub, we can go ahead and install the phone adapter onto the eyepiece by loosening its screw and sliding the eyepiece through. Fasten the eyepiece into placement. 
Now we can insert the eyepiece by removing the protective cap and loosening the topmost thumb screw. Apply back the tension, and now we can start using a phone lens to capture dark sky objects. This is great for astrophotography since most modern phones now have long exposure capabilities. The very last piece is the bumper. Remove the adhesive from the pad and place on the bottom lip of the telescope, approximating where the tube makes contact with the back brace. Congratulations, now our Dobsonian is fully built, you should be able to tilt and spin the telescope smoothly and comfortably. When you're ready to go out stargazing, remember to remove the dust cap to expose the mirrors. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Here at Explore Scientific, we stand behind our products and customer service 100%. If you need any other assistance or have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us via email or by phone. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.